What's up everyone? Well, today we're going to do a little bit of a diagnostic sort of problem solving exercise and we're going to use this Japanese red pine as the example. This tree has been in the collection of a friend of mine who lives here in Northern California for maybe the last five or six years. And it's been growing in the Bay Area, but in a warmer part of the Bay Area. And it's been doing really well up until this year. In fact, I saw this tree in June. It's now just late December of 2021. So six months ago, I saw this tree and it looked healthy enough to decandle. So I went ahead and decandled it. And then the result here, uh, six months later is that we have all of these browning needles and really weird sort of growth coming out like some of the some of the buds have actually dropped all of their new needles and uh, in other places the needles are all yellow with some of them having uh, brown tips and so Whenever you see this kind of thing, obviously there's something going on with the tree. And as a, as a grower, our job is to figure out what's going on and try to solve the problem. Some problems are solvable and some problems are not solvable. Just looking at the, the symptoms on this tree is going to tell us most of what we need to know. But some of the other things that I know from when I went this morning to pick this up from my friend's house is that the rest of his trees look fine. Now he doesn't have any other red pines and red pines are a little bit more susceptible to foliar diseases in general than Japanese black pines. But what I can see from looking at the rest of his trees is that he's fertilizing regularly, his water is okay, and that basically there isn't some sort of broad foliar pathogen that's just making a swath of destruction through his entire collection. It's really isolated to just this tree. When you're diagnosing problems with a tree, it can be difficult to overcome some of the common issues that are, that are pervasive. And so, for example, this tree is just showing signs of stress from a heat wave that was timed you know, badly in terms of the tree's metabolism. Now, I really doubt that's the case. Um, and when I look at this tree, what I see is uh, there is some sort of issue with the roots. So the, the weakness in the roots is likely causing the yellowing of the foliage. And then it is also either just allowing some of this Full, some of the needle tips to die back or it is making the needles more susceptible to fungal infection which is then causing needle dieback. So having taken a look at one of these needles under a loop and I'm let me grab another one here off of the tree pick one that is sort of like partially brown and take a look at the junction of the green portion with the brown portion. What I can see is that there's no definite distinct area here where there's fungal activity. And if I look at this under a 20X loop, I'm not seeing any sporulation. I'm not seeing any little white bumps coming out of the needle on either side of that, that would make me think that there was some fungal activity in there that killed off that part of the needle. And now that fungus is releasing a spore to further populate the rest of the tree or other trees. So the next step that I'm gonna do in this is because here in the Bay Area, I can provide aftercare for this that'll make it fine. Um, I'm gonna pull this out of the, the pot and take a look at the roots to see what is going on down here. All right, I've got this pulled out and just taking a look underneath here at what the general status of the root tips is and it's not too bad actually i'm not seeing slimy you know falling apart roots here generally speaking these roots like they're look like they're growing slowly and in reasonably good condition i'm also not seeing a giant colony of root aphids or anything like that i have actually never seen root aphids on a japanese red pine what I am seeing here is actually some pretty nice looking mycorrhizal activity. And that's really uh, encouraging because it means that the, 
the roots are putting out a good amount of root exudate. This right here is mycorrhiza. And if this were like a sort of more of a bluer color, I would be concerned that it was actually root aphids, but this actually appears to be the good stuff. And so that makes me think that these roots are healthy and that the issue is not with the roots at all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the, uh, the bottom of the root ball here with a loop and make sure that this is what I think it is. And if it is, then I'm just gonna put it back in the container because the tree is already not super strong. All right, with my improvised microscope here, I am taking a look at a pair of needles that does not have brown tips, but there's some discoloration there and it's kind of hard to see. But basically what I'm seeing is that it looks like there is some sporulation going on here and that most likely this is a fungal pathogen. All right, so after doing some online research and checking with a couple of people, I'm pretty sure that this is now a needle blight of some sort. So I'm gonna instruct the owner of the tree to spray most of his collection with a copper spray to ensure that it can't spread to other types of trees. So if you have um, pines, you might end up with needle blights on spruce or other things that are closely close enough related that the, the fungus can spread from tree to tree. So even though there's no sign of those already, I think that it's best to use a preventative when you have something like this uh, potentially causing problems in your garden. Now, because copper spray is basically just a barrier to the establishment of spores on the foliage, we'll have to treat this multiple times over the course of the next six to 12 months to ensure that the fungus doesn't maintain some sort of a foothold on this plant or in the owner's collection. If you have plant diagnostic tips or experience with treating needle blight on pines, leave the information in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed that video and thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.